Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Editor at ClassicsToday.com, and it's that time, 2022, the Keep On Listening Awards, where I present the best discs of the year. And not just in my opinion, I'm talking about objectively, the universe agrees with me, and everyone else's list is crap. This is the only one that matters, right? Absolutely. And I do have to say something as a preface to this particular year's award, because today, it just so happens that at the time that we're doing the COLA presentation, um, we've reached 20,000 subscribers. And I just want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for your support, for your time, for your indulgence, for putting up with me, for watching all of this stuff, for participating in this endlessly fascinating discussion about the world of classical music and music more generally. I mean, it's inexhaustible. And I'm hopefully uh, never exhausting. And I just can't tell you how appreciative I am. I love you all, except for the ones I delete or cancel because you're obnoxious. But basically, I love you all. And I, I, I just am completely touched and honored and overwhelmed by the kindness and support and intelligence and dialogue and all of the wonderful things that we have engaged in. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. At the end of 2022, here's to another fabulous year or 12 or 15 or however many we can do. And we're going to keep on listening. And just a little reminder, you can get your Keep On Listening t-shirts and sweatshirts and goodies at the classicstoday.com shop. I haven't done a plug in months, so you can't complain about that, can you? So here we are. You ready? Let me see what we've got here. Uh, hang on here. We've got one, two, three, four, ten, ten Keep On Listening awards plus, plus a disc of the year which is not one of them. I've decided to do them a little bit differently. And I have some like show and tell objects here so you can see some of them as we go through the list. So are you ready? Number one, here we go. It's Florence Price, Symphonies Numbers 1 and 3 with the Philadelphia Orchestra under Yannick Nézé Séguin on Deutsche Gramophone. Now, I've been pushing Florence Price for quite a while now, and so is everybody else, because she's an African-American woman, and, uh, you know, she has the politics and the biography, now that she's dead and everyone ignored her in her life and treated her like dirt, to finally get the posthumous recognition that she deserves. And she deserves it. She is a good, good composer, a serious composer, one with a real personal style. And one of the things I always said about these these, you know, politically correct choices, is that what's really going to matter, what's really going to tell as time goes on, is whether or not major orchestras perform this music and record it, and it starts to sink into the repertoire. And I think Price has a really good chance of that happening. I'm hoping she does. And it's recordings like this, which are supposed to be one of a series of her music. There's not so much orchestral music. You could probably get it all, the four symphonies, the concertos, the orchestral pieces on, on maybe four or five discs max. But the bottom line is she is a composer worth getting to know for sure. And then let history do what history does. How well it lasts, how long it stays in the repertoire, whether or not it makes it into the repertoire, all of those things will be decided in the fullness of time. But what we need to do is keep on listening. And so Florence Price richly deserves a COLA award for 2022 because now we have a major American, my God, an American orchestra, thank goodness, on a major label promoting her work. And I think the importance of that cannot be overrated, number one. So number two, well, we have to do a Kapustin disc, don't we? Kapustin is a composer I will push relentlessly because I think he's marvelous. Kapustin and Schnitka cello concertos with Eckhart Runga cello, the Berlin Radio Symphony Orchestra under Frank Strobel on Capriccio. This Kapustin stuff that Capriccio's doing is phenomenal. It's amazing, and they're going to do more. It was my disc of the year, I think, last year. Just fabulous. His piano concertos and other goodies. 
Well, the cello concerto is no less splendid. It really is. It's just wonderful, wonderful work. Brilliant and virtuosic and fun to listen to. And the schnitka, oh my goodness, what a hair-raising piece that is. It's also a glorious work. Dark, gloomy, expressionistic, twisted, and, and just fantastic with a gorgeous finale full of really evocative music and, and, and oh, good Lord, this is such a fantastic album. It really is. I loved every single minute of it, and so will you. So that was really, really fun. Number three. Well, this is a disc I've talked about just recently. Dvorak's Poetic Tone Pictures with Life Ove Ansnes Piano on Sony Classical. Again, this is one of those cases where you get a major artist on a major label promoting some unusual repertoire and giving it the attention and love that it deserves. And maybe it'll change people's minds about it because Dvorak has more music that people do not listen to than music that people do. And as a composer for the piano, he really gets short shrift. So hopefully this recording will make many, many new friends. And I don't need to talk about it more because I already have it. You can go check out the video on that performance and Jed Disler's superb review at classicstoday.com of this particular disc. I mean, really, it's a, a wonderful, wonderful recording. And I think Ansnes deserves a lot of credit. He's done a lot of uh, uh, unusual piano music. I mean, he's done the Nielsen piano works. He's done, you know, sort of niche repertoire stuff, and he does it extremely well. And so uh, this was a wonderful, wonderful uh, surprise to see it come across my my speakers or desk or wherever it went. Number four, Inescu, Piano Quartet Number no. One and Piano Trio in A Minor with a whole passel of artists. Um, well, you know, there's a quartet and a trio, so there's at least four, and some more of them too, um, on Naxos. This is another disc that I talked about recently. Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful disc of gorgeous chamber music, full of invention and fantasy and amazing timbral ingenuity and tunes, and oh my God, it's wonderful. I've been playing this thing constantly um, ever since I reviewed it, and I put it on my iPhone, and I listen to it in the car, along with the Dvorak and a few other things too, by the way. And oh my God, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Nescu is one of those, those, those fringe composers, you know, because he wrote the Romanian Rhapsodies, everybody listens to those. But there's so much more music. And it's absolutely fantastic. And this disc is without question one of those. Next, one of the great Czech composers of the 20th century, Miroslav Kabilac. Is it Kabilac or Kabilac? Kabilac, sorry. It's a ch 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 Oh my goodness, this is a fabulous disc, and the music's wonderful. And again, I have talked about it rather recently because it was a, it was new, and I was sort of sitting on it. It wasn't that new, but I, you know, I was sitting on it and listening to it and enjoying it. And you know, the problem is, as I've pointed out many times, that once I talk about something, it kind of goes into the you know permanent collection, and there it sits. And I have to listen to newer stuff. One of the one of the only things I don't like about being a critic and doing this is that is that I don't have time to sit back and savor the things that I really love, and uh, you know, and so and so I wait sometimes before I talk about them because then I get to do that up front and really get it into my brain and enjoy it. And this disc with orchestral works by Kabbalat is amazing. You get the mystery of time, his Pasakalia for large orchestra, which is 25 minutes of the most intense crescendo you've ever heard in your life. It's an amazing piece. And then Hamlet Improvisation for large orchestra, Reflections, nine miniatures for orchestra, full of fantasy and character, and Metamorphosis two on the oldest Czech hymn, for piano and orchestra. These are all terrific pieces. He was a very, very meticulous, serious, dedicated, heavy-duty composer. And if you like music with meat on its bones, with substance, even as little things that has that makes you think and makes you listen and, and draws you in and and surrounds you and envelops you with its own mysterious world. Oh my God, is this great! 
absolutely fantastic. And by the way, the list of all these things is down below so you can see them, I mean, clearly and easily. So yeah, The Mystery of Time by Miroslav Kabalach, one of the great masterpieces of 20th century music, I am convinced. So yeah, and I have the disc here. Here it is. There you go. I'm holding it up for you. Um, it features, by the way, the Prague Radio Symphony Orchestra under Marco Ivanovich. Yay! So that's that. So after Kabbalah, oh yeah, now we get some boxes. We got a bunch of boxes of various kinds. Um, and uh, they're really just, there's just some fantastic stuff here. Actually, one of them is over there. I could go get it. Well, nah, it's all right. I just did it. Talked about that too. First, here we are. Hans Rosebaugh. This is our historical box, if you want to call it that. Um, well, there's only a couple of them. French music, just because. Rosebaud was such a great conductor. He was a fabulous conductor. Everybody loved him. He had an enormous musicality and talent. He was working with a second-rate orchestra, you know, and here he is doing French stuff. And I, I just think it's great because nobody expects him to be great at French stuff. And he is because he was a great conductor. He was great at everything he did, just about. So we've got Debussy, all kinds of stuff. Ravel, all kinds of stuff. Roussel, really cool stuff. Hibert, Millot, Maurice Jarre, Messiaen, Onager, and Mihalovici. What a collection. Four discs wildly varied repertoire, beautifully performed on SWR Classic. This is a phenomenal series. I've talked about it on several other occasions, and I think that we need to celebrate Maestro Rosebaud. We really do. He was one of the 20th century greats, one of the great unknowns, because he worked in radio. He worked often in contemporary music. Um, he didn't get a chance to perform much outside of Germany or with the supposed major orchestras of the day, and he died. He passed away in the early 60s. So, so you know, this is, a, this is for collectors. Seriously wonderful music for collectors. Yay. Great. Terrific. Now, after Rosebud, we have another pile of, well, two more box sets, actually, or three, anyway. The Igor Markevich boxes. There are two of them as you may recall. At the moment, my Igor Markevich boxes are in boxes. They're boxed up somewhere, so I can't pull them out and wave them in front of you, but oh, they're great. This was an Australian Eloquence production. You've got two big boxes of 20-some-odd CDs each, one of them on Deco, which represents his Philips legacy, and the other on Deutsche Gramophone which represents his Dutch gramophone legacy. There we go. And Markevich was another one of those. I mean, we waited for these, didn't we? Weren't we all like panting and drooling and salivating, waiting for the Markevich boxes? And then Eloquence released them, and they were wonderful, and they are wonderful, and they're beautifully put, put together and packaged, and they're not going to last forever. So get them while they're hot. Oh my goodness, they're so wonderful. So the two Markevich boxes have to be on any short list of best things of the year because the guy was just a screaming genius and just about everything he did is worth hearing and his repertoire interests were so wide. I mean, he did Berwald, he did weird French stuff, he did, he did, you know, Cherubini, he did the Guno St. Cecilia Mass, he did, I just, unbelievable stuff and he did it marvelously. His Beethoven was great. His Brahms was great. He was just great. So these two boxes are a really essential collector's item, and no one's going to argue with me putting those on the list. And after Markevich, there is a Naxos box, which I also talked about recently, and which, as I said, is sitting over there in another shelf, because I did it recently, so I know where it is. Brazil M. Concerto, that fabulous collection based on the Brazilian music series, which which I'm told is going to run up to about 40 discs, which is just wonderful because then there'll be a bigger, bigger box at some point, maybe, if we're lucky, a huge, huge, enormous box. But that's that's a fantastic disc of composers ranging from Villa Lobos to 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 Camargo Mozart Guarnieri, or Mozart Camargo Guarnieri, whatever his name was, and 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 Garapaish, who I've been enjoying. I mean, I've been taking, you know, covering most of these discs one at a time as they come out, because this is a major fascinating series, a, a series which, as I've said before, is entirely repertoire-driven. 
It's not about famous people. It's not about name artists. It's about musical interest. And wow, is there a lot of musical interest. I mean, this is one of the great things happening in the world of classical music today, this Brazilian series. And so the Brazil M Concerto box, which gives you six or so of those, of those productions, is definitely worth having. It really is. Even if you don't like everything in it, and you're not gonna, it's, it's just, it's a discovery. It's an opportunity to get in on the ground floor, discover all of this marvelous music, and participate in the amazingly fascinating process in which just music becomes classical music based on, you know, how we respond to it and whether we listen to it and whether some of it leeches into the repertoire, as with Florence Price. Really, really fantastic stuff. And after Brazil and Concerto, we have, here's another box. Yay! The Mozart Complete Piano Sonatas with Robert Levin. Now, this, this was an easy call. It's on ECM. He's playing Mozart's own forte piano. Yeah, I mean, obviously restored and diddled and whatever they did with it, who knows. Frankly, I considered that a gimmick and couldn't care less. Robert Levin is without question one of the great Mozartians and period performance guys out there. Um, he is, you know, he channels Mozart. He like writes Mozart. He completes Mozart. He spends a lot of time on Mozart. He's done editions of all of the incomplete Mozart choral works, like the Requiem and the Mass in C. He in C minor. He, he's really, really a brilliant, brilliant scholar, and passionate advocate of this music. You know how much I buy his channeling of Mozart. Well, you know, I mean, he does it. And he does it quite well, and. Frankly, not many of us are qualified to be able to say if it sounds like Mozart or doesn't sound like Mozart or it's as good as what Mozart would have done or if it's not and it doesn't matter. What matters here is just brilliant, brilliant keyboard artistry, uh, fabulously inventive ornamentation in the sonatas. Really, really, he makes you listen to the music with fresh ears. And that's the point. There are millions of cycles of Mozart piano sonatas. And and these are, are, you know, well, a reference edition, shall we say? I mean, they really are. They're wonderful. I mean, you know, Ronald Browdygum did them also on period instruments. They're quite good on bis. But I love this set. It's, it's beautifully done. It's wonderfully recorded. It's so intelligent and so musical. And the Mozart sonatas are not pieces that I generally care about um, because I think, frankly, Haydn's are more interesting. That's me. Um, and also... Um, I just, I just, there's so much else to listen to. And the piano writing to me just is not fascinating in terms of like keyboard technique because it's early and, you know, it's not, it's not on my hit list of like really popular, famous stuff. But these I listen to. It has to really be special so that I perk up my ears and get into it. And I got into this and so will you. A fantastic set, brilliantly done and, and just so important. And next, let's see. Oh, yeah. Thomas de Hartmann, the first volume of his orchestral music. You know, de Hartmann was the guy who was hanging out with that crazy guru, Gurdjieff, Arthur Gurdjieff, or whatever his name was. And, and you know, he was a major follower. He transcribed all those little tunes that Gurdjieff supposedly plonked out with one finger or whatever he did, or played on the guitar, I think he did. And, and Hartmann was a composer of his own, a very good composer of his own. He was Ukrainian. And so this marvelous performance features the Lviv National Philharmonic under Theodore Kuchar on Takata Classics. Absolutely first class music, unknown music. And you get, what is it? The Symphony Poem number four. There's a bunch of them. They're these long, some of them are very big and long. In fact, the third volume was just released in this series. It's the second volume on Takata. Um, which has like Symphony Poem Number no. Three, which is like an hour long. It's a huge thing, and the Concerto Andaluz, which is really fun, and Unfet in Ukraine, a party in Ukraine, just delightful, totally unknown, wonderfully characterful, colorful music um, that deserves to be performed. Um, it's part of that Russian school, maybe a little Scriabinesque, maybe a little bit. Rimsky-ish in places. I mean, I say Russian school because Ukraine was part of Russia then. I mean, I'm not going to get into the politics of what's going on there, except to say that it's a wonderful thing that the Lviv 
uh, National Philharmonic was able to perform this music under the circumstances that are currently going on. Um, I mean, and they, they, are, they are troopers, real troopers. They're supposed to be making a U.S. tour. I don't know what's happening with that. It's, the whole situation is just insane. But wow, what wonderful music and what a wonderful discovery. You will notice, by the way, that most of these selections are off the beaten path things. They really are. I mean, because there's just so much stuff coming out of standard repertoire that we've all heard a billion times. And I would so much rather listen to something fresh and new and something that represents a genuine discovery than, you know, the 100,000th Brahms Symphony, which is not to say that if one of them is stunning, I won't include it. Of course I would. I mean, the best are the best. They are what they are. Greatness is its own justification, as I always say, even if it means, you know, billionth duplication of a repertoire standard. But by and large, um, I think it's so much more fun to come up with a list that has new stuff, not just for you, but for those holiday gift specials and things. You want to get some of this stuff? Tell your friends, you know, create a new audience, give them something that they don't already have. And so that brings us last Oh, but so not least to this amazing disc of the year. And I have the cover right here so you can see it. Blam! It's Paul Wee doing the Beethoven Eroica in Liszt's piano transcription coupled to the Alcon transcription of Mozart's 20th piano concerto piano and orchestra parts for a single piano. It's on BIS and it's like an 80 some odd minute CD. They give you such value for the money. And Paul Wee is a, is a phenomenon. He's, he's one of those pianists in the Mark andre Amelan sort of school, an unbelievable virtuoso with an insane technique. He is also a barrister. Um, something which he promotes on his web page. I guess if you're having some sort of legal issue in the UK, you can always call him up and, you know, get a recital and representation at the same time, which is really rather cool. So when he's not barristing, he is playing the piano phenomenally. And, you know, uh, I've always said that, you know, the Eroica is not my favorite Beethoven symphony, but I love this piano arrangement of it. I have to say, and the key, the trick which Paul Wee manages so fantastically, is to make it sound like piano music, like good piano music, like really good piano music, because this is not just Liszt transcription of the Eroica. This is also a really great performance of the Eroica. I mean, he really gets the symphony, and it's, it's phenomenal. And I play this. This is another one that I play in my car all the time. You know, you put it on your iPad or whatever, your iPod or your thingy or your whatever it is, play it while you're on the road. It's just marvelous, a marvelous performance. And, you know, one of the thing is, you know, I did a little chat about bad codas or unhappy endings. And one of my unhappy endings is the coda to the finale of the Eroica, which I think sounds kind of silly and thin and unsatisfying in many performances, not sales, but some. And, you know, Liszt, I think, agreed with me because he, he diddles the strict score. It has some piano flourishes at the end that are just wonderful. Oh, I love it. And then we have the Alcon, the Mozart D minor piano concerto. Whoo, baby. What an insane transcription that is. It's, you know, Alcon was famous with this because he did it with the first movement of Beethoven's third piano concerto, as I, if I recall correctly. And then there's his own concerto for solo piano, which does that whole thing for 50 minutes. Um, you know, this idea of rendering orchestral textures on the piano and simultaneously pianistic textures on the piano. And so here we have the whole bloody concerto, um, all 30 some odd minutes of it, or 30 or so minutes of it. Uh, and and again, Paul Wee plays it stunningly. It's just an amazing, amazing performance. I have not made a video, I don't think, about this recording yet, but Jed Distler um, wrote an excellent review of the recording on classicstoday.com, which you can go and read, and I suggest that you do it. This is one of the piano discs of the century, I have no doubt, and the BIS sonics are marvelous. Now, we has done three discs so far on BIS. There's the Alcon Concerto for Solo Piano and the Symphony for Solo Piano, um, naturally, and then there's uh, Talberg, 
the 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 art of song as applied to the piano which is a wonderful disc of operatic transcriptions and things where where the soloist is called upon to duplicate the singing quality of the human voice does it work yeah sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but again that's a two disc set and it's absolutely splendid and it's one of those iconic romantic virtuoso sets series that really really people ought to know because they're they're beautiful arrangements and then there's this the the list beethoven and alcon mozart what a fantastic legacy of three discs or three productions it's not a legacy yet it's starting to be a legacy it's going to be great hopefully there will be many more exciting recordings with this artist on bis and i just hope that as the disc of the year this gives it a little push so that people go out there and listen to these wonderful transcriptions and enjoy them as much as i have and that my friends sums up the cola keep on listening awards 2022 Thank you all for joining me on this particular journey. It's been a fun year. I see no diminution. Dim I never can pronounce that word. Diminution. Is that the word? Yes. Diminishment of the cool stuff coming out. And we'll be talking about it relentlessly in the upcoming year as well. So thank you so much. Thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel. I, I, I wish you all the best. Happiness, health, Lots and lots of great music. Take care.